Bed Bath & Beyond. That stock has been tumbling down by incredible amounts today, folks. Down 40% today. The lovable meme stock is being hit hard. So loading this up in the stock research tool built by yours truly. We're going to do a fundamental analysis on this company. And look, folks. Look at this snapshot here of what we got here. For my three different categories, we have a company metrics that looks that compares the five-year averages to the trailing 12 months to the financial valuations that compares the statements of the company and a price analysis which will determine the intrinsic value of this business. A lot of negative numbers across the board, a lot of red across the board, whatever this is, whatever's going on over here, it is not looking healthy for this business. So let's go and run through the numbers of this company. We're going to look at the company metrics first to see any kind of discrepancies of what we're seeing here. So on average, we have a very low PE ratio, but currently we are at negative 1.01. Not too great. Negative numbers for our EPS, negative ROE, negative profit margin. This is quite concerning. This stock was getting a lot of traction in the meme community like Wall Street Bets and so on and so forth. And it really begs the question, what are they actually investing in? Because here on the channel, I like to try to research companies from a fundamental perspective. But so you, you have an understanding of what you're actually buying. But you're buying a company here with no net income, negative free cash flow, really poor return on invested capital, as we can see here in like negative 23 compared to negative 14 as well as a decent almond Z score, which is very strange considering everything that we've shown here at uh, 4.04 .04 and a Piotrowski score of five, where we want to see this number seven or higher, nine being the highest we could possibly achieve. Let's go into our income statement and see what is the story here with Bed Bath & Beyond. And we can see that over the last 10 years, our revenue has been somewhat stagnant, somewhat like it's been improving, improving. We hit this 12.35 2018 and it's been hovering around 12, dipped a little bit, dipped to quite a bit, dipped a lot. Now it's at seven. So we have declining revenue, free cash flow. What's the story over there? Um, 800 million, a billion, 800. So it's been rocky, dipping, dipping, and negative now. There's a lot. It's just it's just been on. It seems like it's just been on a decline over the last five years, and that's pretty evident, folks. When we jump into our financial valuations category over here, we're ranking this company a two out of ten. Now, what this part of my software does, folks, it takes a look at the cash flow statements, the income statements, and the balance sheets, and it grades it out of ten based off if they're making improvements or not. So a company metrics kind of compares what they were doing on average over the five years. This compares whether uh, it takes a look at what they're actually doing uh, over the last five years and if they're improving or not. And they'll aw get awarded points if they are obviously improving or not. So with Bed Bath & Beyond, our low PE ratio on average is great. We want to see companies beneath 22.5. Share dilution, they're earning points because they're buying back shares at 34%. They bought back 34% of shares, which is great. If you look at our charts section here of um, Bed Bath & Beyond, we can see the outstanding shares slowly, slowly dwindle down. This is great. We want to see that because for us as an investor, the more company, the, the less shares are available on the market means that we have more larger stake of the pie you know what I mean we have more larger slices of the pie which means we don't have to share the profits and cash flow with other investors when there's more shares being diluted that means more people are eating from the same pizza and we don't like sh we, we don't want that we don't want to share with those people the less people involved the better it is now great we have a low PE ratio we have a low or we have a high sh uh, share buyback but everything else is just red everything else is just looking terrible we have a current ratio sitting at 1.02 now and granted not the worst it means they have just enough assets on hand to cover the liabilities cool but we want to see we want to have at least a margin of safety so that's why i look for companies that have a current ratio of 1.5 or higher bed bath and beyond does not have that so that in mind we have a really so they're not they're not earning points in the current ratio category. 
Our ROE is terrible at uh, negative 71%, not good. EPS growth is down, not good. An astronomically high debt to equity ratio. This is not great, folks. That means they're taking on debt to grow this business and not building equity. So that's how they're leveraging their capital. Not healthy. Our net income is down, and we kind of expressed that. We looked at that. Our free cash flow is down as we looked at. ROIC is at negative 4.18. Oh, 4. Oh. Rough. We want to see this over 10% or higher. We don't have anywhere near close to that. And our revenue growth is down by 8% over the last five years, as we expressed here. So in the first half of the 2010s, like it was looking, looking pretty promising. And then it hit uh, 2018. And from that point onwards, it's just been slowly, slowly, slowly dwindling down to the point where we are now. And it's, it hasn't been that great. So it really begs the question, what are we what are we actually buying with this company? Are we buying just negative growth? A lot of negative numbers here on the board. So not too impressed with this company. I mean, it hasn't even taken into account what uh, and we've and here's a 52 week range, folks. We've hit a high of thirty dollars and a low of four point three eight currently at eleven oh two at the time of recording this video. That's interesting. What I'm going to do now, folks, I'm going to go into the price analysis section of my video or my software here, and we're going to plug in some numbers and we're going to see what we should be paying for Bed Bath & Beyond today. Now, here's the, here's the thing, folks. When you have a company that's been decreasing in revenues and stuff like that and, um, with, and free cash flow is going down, as long as they stay positive, there's still money to be made in a company that's been declining. Uh, personally, I don't like that, but there is still value in, in this business. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find out what that value is. So I'm gonna fill out these boxes and we'll touch base in just a quick second, so stand by. So before we jump into the price analysis section, if you're enjoying the video so far, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You wanna get your hands on the software, it's coming out very soon for my viewers and subscribers. So check, take a look at this. So here is what I did so you guys are aware. If you're new to the channel, I like to try to stay as conservative as possible with the numbers that I choose. So with Bed Bath & Beyond, I've stuck around this ten, these ten-year numbers, eight, five-year numbers. So I did. Let's I hypothesized and said, okay, look, let's say the uh, the revenue growth is just going down like astronomically high, negative eight percent. So actually, I'm gonna change this a little bit because it's over ten year. It's year over year. I'm gonna go just. I'm gonna go negative. Five. I'm gonna go negative three, negative two negative two and then zero so basically revenue growth is just still going down negative three negative two and zero just the revenue stays the same over the next 10 years and then we could uh, see how that works out to be profit margin i'm keeping it super super low based off of our 10-year numbers same with the free cash flow and uh, price to free cash flow and pe ratio i kept it extremely low uh, it might be in a speculative territory considering we got negative 1.22 here and negative 1.01 but our five-year average PE ratio was 6.63. So that might, that makes sense to me to keep it at the high side, being at six, four, and two, respectively, and price of free cash flow in these hypothetical numbers. A lot of speculating here, folks. Uh, I don't, which I don't like. But I'm going to click calculate with a desired return of 13%, seeing what this company can do. But this is factoring in neg primarily no revenue growth at all. And my my goal here is to see what the value is in a revenue declining business because there is value to be had. And here's the thing, folks. Current price is 10.98. An average calculation comes out to be 588. So if you think based off these numbers here with declining revenue on a moderate average, 5.13, this company's stock price has like fallen in half to make sense. Now, this is with no revenue growth. So this is assuming nothing changes. Everything stays the same. They still are not making as much money. And the revenue growth is going down. And if the very, uh, at the best, staying the same. But this would definitely change if they're obviously making improvements. But here's what I'm saying, folks. There's still, as long as there's still free cash flow being generated by a company, even if the revenue growth is going down 
there's still something of value within this business. Now, when I jump into a business like this, knowing all the negative numbers and the massive debt to equity numbers that we that we've shown on the board, the low EPS, no, this does not check out at all. I like buying companies that have at least an eight to ten on my board here with a decent margin of safety being expressed over here, as well as the trifecta being met with our free cash flow, revenue growth, and net income growth going up. So with Bed Bath & Beyond, yes, it is just a meme stock that hit astronomically high valuations based off of God knows what. But that's the video, folks. If you wanna see a company evaluated, write it down in the comment section below. I will get to it eventually. And make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. This is a company that's fallen by incredible amounts, as I said, and it needs to fall further for it to even be in some sort of wheelhouse of being a potential buy. Because what are they doing? What are they doing? Nothing's ha nothing is being produced with this business. Take a look at that. Net income absolute disaster from 2017 onwards 2017 was a pretty much a pivotal moment here as we can see it's 685 already starting on a decline from 2016 and it's just been negative ever since that's it it's all numbers folks it's all numbers and the company's telling you what you should be looking at it's not hard to analyze companies guys it's just you need you just need patience some conviction and a rational mind. Anyways, folks, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.